Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to church. Great to be in the house of the Lord today, together. It's the best place to be. Welcome, everybody, joining us online as well. Uh, it's wonderful to sing praises to our God and just to declare the truth of who he is in our circumstances. And I pray that as we meet together, there'll be a releasing of burdens as we worship the Lord and as we focus on his truth and declare his truth. Amen. Um, because we're going to sing some songs that help us to enter into his presence and to declare his truth. Declare his truth. And uh, one thing we can do is, as I said, declare the truth over of God over our circumstances. And one of those truths is that the battle belongs to the Lord. Every problem, everything, um, and most things have a spiritual cause, don't they? And those spiritual battles we can give to the Lord as we worship this morning. So I invite that you to do that because we are a people, if we know Jesus, we're a people of power. We're a people of victory and we can stand in his victory today. Does anyone want to say amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. So let's hop on our feet as we give praise to our Lord this morning. Love it if you could join in with the singing and sing these songs together. You want to clap your hands as well? Let's pray. Power 
trust in God and how good he is, how mighty he is. And uh, just as we sing a song of trust, before we sing a song of trust, i just read a couple of verses here from Psalm 107. And it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord, that's us, tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands. Is that us this morning? Could be. Finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty. Is that us today? And their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. Amen. I'll say that again. And he delivered them. He delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let's, let's sing this song of trust to the Lord. Give him thanks and praise this morning. and every person, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you hear us. Sing it together. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I 
trust him that's why i trust him i sought the lord and he heard and he answered i sought the lord and he heard and he answered i sought the lord and he heard and he answered that's why i trust him that's what the church together Continue in your presence, Lord. You'd reveal something special to everybody today. Um, we just thank you, Lord, and how good it is to enter into your presence, Lord. Just touch each and every one of us, we pray. Amen. Beautiful little song. I'm going to sing a little love song to the Lord. And it's one we haven't sung in many years, but I pray that it'll be a beautiful one for you to minister to your heart and in a relationship with the Lord Jesus today. Lovely are your dwelling places.
Expressing love for the Lord. We're moving into a time of prayer now, and I'd like to try and keep that attitude of love and praise during this time. We often come to God with um, sort of a great list of things that we want Him to do, and that's right, that's good. Scripture tells us to bring our requests to God. But today, in this time of prayer, I'd like to simply come and praise our wonderful God and express our love for him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we really do praise you. We just bless you and praise you because you are such an awesome and wonderful God. We praise you for your presence. You're always with us through the good times, the not so good times and the really bad times. And you are there right beside us, supporting us and helping us. We praise you. We bless you for that. We praise you for the gift of prayer. The fact that we can come and we can talk to you about anything, anywhere. That there is a true relationship with you. And we just bless you and praise you for this. That you hear our prayers and you answer them. Sometimes the answers aren't exactly what we want. But you answer in love every time. Bless you. Praise you. We praise you for your omnipotence. The fact that... You are all powerful and despite what we see going on around us in the world, we praise you because you are still in control. We bless you for that. We praise you for your omniscience, the fact that you know each of us intimately. You know everything about us and you love us unconditionally. We praise you for that. We praise you and bless you for Ann Street Church of Christ that has been here for 140 years as a testament of your love here in Brisbane City. And most of all, Father, we praise you for the gift of your son, Jesus. He's the reason we're here at church. He's the reason we live. He's the reason we want to share about your love. Father, we just sang... My heart will follow wholly after you. Let that be true for each and every one of us, those here in the chapel, those watching online, that each one of us will follow wholly after you. We bless you and we praise your holy name. Amen. Thanks, Rose. Awesome. What a great reminder this morning, hey, as we come here that we're sort of all in the same boat, aren't we? We come here to uh, worship and to um, just be ourselves, regardless of the week we've just had. We, uh, we've all been through stuff and some could be up here, some can be down here, but our God remains the same and he loves us regardless of how we feel we went. You know, so it's good to be here, isn't it? Good to be in God's house today. Yes, who's happy to be here online? Yes, good to be here. And um, we've just got a couple of quick announcements. Of course, we've got Caitlin and Joe and the kids here today. So let's give them another hand from coming out from the suburbs into the little city here. It's great to have you here, Caitlin, and we're looking forward to your message later on. Of course, Monday night we've got Bible study here, so 6:30 onwards. There's a seat here for you. So uh, if you want to come here and, and look at the Word of God and dig a bit deeper, then please come here on uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, 6.30. That'd be awesome. Of course, next Saturday is our, our beach trip. And we've got a piece of paper with people's names on it at the back. So uh, today is the last day to register if you want to come to the beach trip to Mooloolaba next Saturday. And for those that have 
put their name down. There's a, a quick meeting after church in the tea room. That's one way of getting you to the tea room, isn't it? Hey, having a little meeting. So if we can just grab to the, go to the side there for a little bit uh, and we'll have a quick chat about next Saturday. Um, so just flicking to that next slide, you'll see that um, hopefully that's a bit of an appetite appetizer for you. Nice water, salt water, bit of sand in your toes. What a great way to send, spend a, a Saturday. And um, so, yeah, we'll have a quick meeting after the service today. The next thing is uh, next week, obviously on uh, next Sunday, we've got this guy here preaching with us. Daniel will be preaching next Sunday. So I know the Lord's been just prompting him with a message. So we just pray for him this, this week if you can. As people bring the word to us here. The following week, Mark's with us. So Mark, thank you, mate. I know the Lord's been prompting you too over the last couple of weeks. And uh, don't forget, uh, on the 17th, is that what it says? 17th of March, we've got our Testimony Sunday. I need new glasses, spec savers. Um, so on the 17th of March, we've got a Testimony Sunday. So if you feel the Lord has got something on your heart that you want to share with the church, it's our turn to have the mic and to just share what the Lord's doing. That's powerful stuff. So uh, if you think you want to spend a couple of minutes up here to just share what the Lord's doing in your life, then that Sunday is put aside for that. Um, so that's about it. I think uh, we all know next, you know, after service, we've got tea and coffee. Obviously very, very free to come out the back through those side doors at the end of the service. And don't forget to be uh, in prayer about our strategic plan rollout as we continue 2024 onwards. So um, that's all there for us to consider and pray about. Um, right now, though, I think we'll just be uh, giving some thanks for the offering. Um, uh, we've got uh, the box on the side there, or you've got online details that will be up on the screen soon. But uh, let's just feel how blessed we are. Let's know how blessed we are. Let's give a little bit back into the Lord's um, work as we reach into our community and um, do ministry in this place. So let's, let's just pray for that now, if we can. If we can get some details up on the screen too, that'll be good for those online um, and for us too as a reminder. Let's pray together, yeah? Lord God, in the stillness of this place, we know that you are here. In the busyness of our life, we know that we can sometimes just sometimes just forget about you during a very busy week. And uh, we just come here this morning just to lay ourselves before you and to give you the rightful place in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us during the week, for guiding us. And for giving us really everything we need. We, we sit here this morning because we are blessed. We're able to get into the city here. We're able to sit down on these chairs and, and turn the lights on and do all these things um, as you've led us to. So Lord, as we give our offerings today in whatever shape or form, whether it's a dollar or something bigger, we know that from a grateful heart that you are pleased. You are pleased with what we give. Thank you, Lord, for this place. We're excited about the ministry. We're excited about all these things that you've got us to do. And uh, we just want to give back to you just that little bit today. Thank you again. And as we look forward to the word, Lord, just open our hearts. Open our ears as to what you want us to hear and take away from here today. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd just love to start by continuing in prayer, um, like we can offer our money to God to make sure that um, as we come this morning, we're offering ourselves to our beautiful Saviour. So join with me how you're comfortable. Um, let's give these moments to God. Jesus, as people we've come from moments of busyness, perhaps moments of stillness, um, 
quite a muddle and a mix of a week if we talk to each person here in this room and each person joining with us online. And one thing that unites us all together is that somewhere within us, we are so hungry and we're so thirsty for you because that's how you created us, that we're not satisfied until we find ourselves in you, until we banquet at the table with you. Thank you for all the beautiful gifts that have come together this morning, the music, the songs, the each person, um, the children, my words, the lights, everything that is here this morning, the building itself. Thank you for these gifts, but would we look and move only towards you this morning? letting go of the things that have built up inside of us and gone stagnant and making space for you to fill us up to overflowing. Amen. I was just watching the children here during the songs. I'm not sure if you could see them. And I thought, gee, they know how to do church, don't they? Um, my daughter, Grace, who's three, she just loves people. She's been tagging around after Rose, wherever Rose goes. And um, she saw some of the other children, ah, yeah, more kids to play with. And my son tags along and I just thought, they, they don't, you know, different ages, different um, lives. They don't know each other. I don't think they even shared names. So they just jumped in and, yeah, you have a clipboard, you have a clipboard. Let's just shake them around. Just being together, being a church body, I thought, wow, that's precious, isn't it? Um, so... As I'm sure I've said most of the times we've visited, I and my husband Joe, we're just so excited to fellowship with you this morning, to be a church together. Um, yeah, we, we love being here with you guys and um, hearing a bit of what's going on in your lives and here in the city as well. Um, as I was having a think about what to talk about this morning, the topic that, that came to my mind that I felt like Holy Spirit was asking me to talk on was, are you full? Um, there's many times, especially in John's gospel, that Jesus talks about those who are hungry and those who are thirsty finding their, their fulfillment and satisfac satisfaction in him. So if we can go to John 4, um, to the next slide, please, Ellis. Um, Jesus is at the well waiting for his disciples to go get food. They've been on a journey, so he's hungry and tired. It's the heat of the day. There's a woman there. She comes along to, to draw some water. He asks her for water and then in, in their um, conversation says, actually, you should ask me for water because everyone who drinks this water of the well will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water that I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So no longer thirsting ever again. Obviously, spiritually, we know that Jesus' disciples and Jesus himself did still eat and drink. So we know this is obviously spiritual, not, not a physical promise Jesus is making. But also not just the thirst is satisfied, but you're so satisfied that you become a source of, and of, of that water outpouring as well, that it's welling up to eternal life. Not going to heaven one day, but life that starts right now. You've just joined in on life that's been there from the beginning and goes through to forever. A life that is abundant. And then in John chapter 6, this is um, during the, the Passover festival. They're not at the festival, but during that time. So the Jews would have been thinking about the meal, which um, part of that was the bread. And then Jesus has fed 5,000 men as well as women and children with 12 baskets left over. And um, the next day, some of those people come to find Jesus. And they say, we want more signs. We want more miracles. They're thirsty to be free from living just to survive living to make just enough to pay taxes and put bread on the table. They said, well, give us more food. God gave our, our um, ancestors food in the desert. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. I am the bread of life. Don't look at the gift, look at me. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me even though you've seen me. And then in John chapter 7, this is during the Festival of Booths, seven days of feasting in Jerusalem. Um, quite a crowd because all the men are required to travel to Jerusalem for it from, from wherever they live. Each day of the um, celebrations and, and festivities, there's a sacrifice, a water sacrifice at, at the temple. So there's a group who come from the temple out to the Pool of Siloam, 
get some water there, come back to the temple and pour that water out on the altar as an offering to God. Part of that um, is said to be around crying out to God for salvation and part is crying out to God for water for their crops. And in that context, Jesus stands up and says loudly, let anyone who's thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. So again, we're not just talking about thirst that's satisfied, but a thirst that's so satisfied that it's welling up and flowing out, that you can't contain it. Um, John points out that Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit and the believers would later receive the Holy Spirit. So we've got these ideas, these, these images of hunger and thirst fully satisfied forever, such an abundance that you can't keep it to yourself, that, it, that it's flowing on to anyone who comes near you. And my first question is, for yourself right now, what word would you use to describe your relationship with Jesus? This is a snippet from a booklet. Uh, you won't be able to see the, I don't think the... Um, the copyright there, sorry, but um, Campus Crusade put out a booklet in 2007 that Kylie was, um, has a copy of if you're interested in more, but have a look through some of those words. Um, perhaps one matches, perhaps another word comes to mind for you, but how would you describe your relationship with Jesus at the moment? You can have as many as you need, Tim. <laughs> um, now, I'm not going to ask for answers out loud. And perhaps you would find it helpful to talk that through with someone or me. If I'm um, here during the morning tea, I'm more than happy to chat. But I'm, I'm going to take a guess that, at least for some of us in this room, the word that you feel most strongly describes your relationship with Jesus at the moment might not be full, fulfilled, satisfied, abundantly alive. Um, and I wanted to take a look at that today in regards to um, some of my own journey. Um, not putting myself on a pedestal because um, I think I can look back and go, wow, there's some exciting times and great things God did. And then I look at the day that I'm in and the way that I'm acting and living and I go, whew, no one wants to know about this day. Um, and so I think it's true of all of us. Um, but I did think that perhaps as we look at some of my journey, um, to greater satisfaction in Jesus, to turning my hunger and thirst more towards him, it might resonate with some of our everyday lives. Um, I think Bible stories are so beautiful and so precious and there's so much in them, but um, I hope this might tie it a little bit more closely to, to our world and, and what we're living in in the present moment. So um, I'll jump back. It's about 13 years, I think, um, when I decided I actually wanted to start taking my relationship with Jesus seriously, that um, I've been attending church, but I went, no, actually, if, if I'm doing this, I probably should actually mean it. I should um, get serious about knowing Jesus, not just standing in the same building as him. Um, and in um, Luke chapter 1, verse 53, Mary has had the angel visit, has just been told that she's going to um, have a baby that will be the Messiah. And she's got this beautiful worship um, that pours out of her. One of the things she says in there is that um, God has filled the hungry with good things, but he sent the rich away empty. And for years that sounded to me like such a vengeful and, and punishment-based God, um, which it's, you know, if, you want, if, if that's been some of your experience, that you can read that there in the scripture. Um, but bit by bit, as I lent into God on that one, he began to show me this is the greatest blessing he can offer us. If we come rich, and if you dig into that Greek word, it's talking about having an abundance, have, being well supplied in resources. Um, if we come with lots of resources and a sense that, that we're in abundance, we don't need God, the greatest blessing God can give us is to show us how empty we are is to show us that those things that we're hungering and thirsting for, that we're going, oh, this pain in my stomach is so strong. I just need to sing that worship song or I just need that person to pray for me or I just need a new job or what, it, you know, you can fill the gaps yourself. Um, that he would then show us that actually we're really empty. Actually, that food isn't filling us up. It's not lasting. 
And that was me. So at this point, like I said, about 13 years ago, um, most services, I would sit in my chair with my arms crossed, my legs crossed, just sit there and internally be critiquing and go, oh, that, that's right, that theology's wrong. I think that could have been done better. They should have used this colour instead of that colour. And, and I had all these excuses and, you know, I could say, oh, worship's just not my thing. I'm just, you know, not really a musical person. And, but actually when I stopped and I put away words and I put away logic and I put away theology and whatever else I wanted to call it, and I just noticed how I felt, I felt really empty. There was no joy, no satisfaction in coming to Jesus. And um, I think if you've ever um, noticed for yourself, if you've been eating a lot of unhealthy food and then you want to change to eating a bit healthier food, the first step is actually not just to start eating healthy food, but the first step is to kind of digest and let go of the junky food, feel empty, so then you'll start to be hungry for good food. Um, your body sort of is still craving the old stuff, and, and that emptiness is the first movement towards hunger for what's good. And I think that was that moment for me of going, I'm, I'm actually really empty on this. I don't want this anymore. And it was a bit-by-bit bit thing, um, you know, like Jesus said, coming to him, you know, I don't think we have to physically come. In fact, in John 4, Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. He says, no, you don't have to go to the temple. You don't have to worship where the Samaritans say it's, it's a spirit and truth thing. It's, it's, it's in here. And so sometimes that moving towards Jesus, there's no visible movement on the outside, but your spirit has turned. Your spirit has moved. And sometimes moving might help you actually really feel what your spirit's crying out for. But it's, it's a spirit movement. And so that was just for me a little bit by little bit turning towards Jesus and letting go of the junk, the, the, not the living water, the stagnant water that was in, in me that hadn't satisfied. And just little by little by um, he filled me. Um, jump forward somewhere in the kind of 18 months after that. And there's so many moments of, of how God filled me, but this one really comes to mind because I was desperately hungry. Um, we had a guest speaker at our church and there were some really unbelievable things happening and I just was standing there going, what about me, God? I'm so hungry. I have to have more of you. I'm so thirsty. I have to drink more of you. And my spirit moved towards Jesus. I took action physically, but it was this, this, there was a spirit movement that began that. And I don't even know how long, at least half an hour, I lay on the floor and I cried and I sobbed and I screamed. Um, I had people come get around and pray for me. You know, it, it was a safe place to do that, but it was that release of what was stagnant. I had to let that out, the things, the pain, the brokenness. And the hunger is still there, still crying out, you've got to fill me, you've got to fill me. I had some sense of filling, some sense that that, you know, when you're so, so thirsty that you just can't think of anything else anymore. You're so uncomfortable. You're maybe trying to have a conversation with someone, you're trying to get somewhere, you just, it's just all you can think of. And so some of that had settled down because I'd, I'd emptied out this space with Jesus um, but the phrase that Holy Spirit had put in my heart and my mind that night was when Jacob was wrestling with the angel and he was wrestling with this angel. He was very audacious, Jacob. Um, I'm sure that's not how the Bible suggests you meant to treat angels, but he's wrestling with this angel. I felt incredibly audacious as well saying this. And he says, I will not let you go until you bless me. And that was what the phrase that was on my heart. And so I'm there and I'm crying, I'm sobbing and I'm beginning to settle, feeling some satisfaction. But I'm not leaving until you do this, God. I'm not leaving until you give me more of you. I need this closeness. And um, there's a really beautiful um, older Christian who has a lot of wisdom, um, close friend of mine. Who, and, and this person just said, that cry in your heart is really precious. And you need to notice that and you need to cling on to that. And you need to come back to that. But you need to live in confident expectation. This moment was about you noticing how hungry you were. God's known for forever how hungry you were. He's begun filling you already. He's filled you more tonight. He'll continue filling you. So I'd had the movement towards Jesus. I'd let the release out. But then I had to continue living in confident expectation, noticing what he was giving me, but knowing there was more still to come. And again, when I think about physical, real food, um, I think that's true, that the junky food often gives you a real buzz in the moment. It feels good in the moment and you want more and you want more and you want more because it doesn't last. But when I switch to eating healthier food, sometimes I feel a little filled up in the moment, but sometimes I just have to trust. And then the next meal and the next meal and over time, over weeks, I start to go, actually, I feel really satisfied. 
and that I, I don't want the junky food anymore. And I think it was a bit of both in this one. It was a bit of that wow sensation that God gave me and a bit of just continuing to wait and to notice the satisfaction that was coming. So following on from that season, um, I'll, I'll jump through it real quick. God did a lot of healing, um, a lot of change within me. Um, then there came a time that my husband and I, Joe, and I have always talked about really wanting to go overseas and spend some time somewhere overseas, not so much because we know stuff and we've got Jesus and we need to bless people more because there's so much to learn when you're out of your depth and out of your comfort. And um, we'd found a missions training school that we were really interested in. We'd considered it. We'd applied. We'd been accepted. We'd looked at the information. The information had changed where we were going. We'd reconsidered, decided we were going, started to tell friends and family, started to look at what we had to pack because we were going through four different countries, different weather, et cetera, et cetera. We'd had our church share with church, had church pray for us. Finally on the plane, we fly all the way over. We get there. We're waiting at the airport, meeting other students on the bus, finally get to the accommodation have dinner, and then we've got our first time of worship. And this is people from age 18 all the way up until I think the eldest lady was about 73 who travelled from over 25 countries to be there together. So that's a pretty special moment to be able to join together. I, I felt a, perhaps a little taste of heaven with that many, that much variety of languages and ages and cultures and, and ways of worshipping God. And um, I moved myself towards Jesus by laying face first on the ground and the jet lag crashed in and I fell asleep. <laughs> and I wanted to include that because I actually think a lot of the time or sometimes, I'm not going to put a ratio on it because it's up to Jesus, sometimes he does give us a spiritual boost or emotional boost and ask us to ignore our physical needs. But our physical needs matter too. And I think sometimes the most helpful and blessed thing that you can do is have a healthy meal, have a good sleep, so on. Um, and I think for that moment, that was, the, that was what I needed. I could have pushed through worship. I know I'm here for you. But my body was screaming. It was so hungry for sleep. Um, so we've got to remember, whether we're going out to save the world, whether we're just in our own home, sometimes sleep, food, so on and so forth is really important. Sometimes it's us running away from problems. Sometimes it's not wanting to deal with things, so on and so forth. So that's why it has to be a turn towards Jesus. Because if I decide what I need, there's always something going underneath that I might be ignoring. But the turn towards Jesus helps me be accountable and go, okay, this time I, I want to sleep and I'm tired, but actually I need to be disciplined and spend some time with you or, or read the Bible or, or whatever it is. Anyway, still on this um, missions trip and um, it was about six, seven weeks in, we're in Madagascar and there was a team of about 20 of us that were going on an outreach to a rural uh, Malagasy village and about uh, seven or eight of us in the, in the smaller group that I was in were choosing a topic, a, a Bible story that we would do a skit of while we were on this outreach. And none of us felt anything specific. No one felt really strongly that I, I really think God has asked us to do this or so on. So it was really just people throwing in ideas and choosing one. And I've certainly had in my life a bad habit of getting in a huff and wanting my own way and thinking my idea is best and trying to make it really uncomfortable for people so that even if they're not going to do it my way, they at least know that they made the wrong choice. Um, but, you know, Jesus had begun to satisfy my hunger and my thirst and I hadn't done that so much. And you think we're over there, we're, we're here to reach the world. It's, it's about reaching out to other people. It's not about me and we're just a team together. But the reality is that our mission field is the people right in front of us, right? I can have travelled to the furthest point on the earth but it could be my husband or my child or, or the Christian right beside me that I actually need to just stop and, and that's my mission field. And so it was one of those moments where that sensation, I was so mad, so silly, it's such a petty thing, but I was so mad. And that rose up in me, this hunger that I would have this need met, that my anger, not that I could be petty and, and have my little tantrum about it, that's not the need, but if you dig underneath that, God gave us emotions and needs and this anger needed to be released. I needed some level of comfort so I could just move on. And, and that rose up, and that's the choice point. What am I going to move towards? Because when you eat a lot of unhealthy food, you have to break the habit, and it's easy to turn back to the food that gives you the buzz in the moment, because it would have felt good in the moment to throw a little tantrum. But it wouldn't have felt so good the next morning when I had to come back to those people and just look at them and be like, I just acted like a three-year-old. What does that matter? Um, sorry, what does that matter in the, in the scheme of you know, being here to, to reach out to people who may never have heard of Jesus? 
So thankfully, I, I stepped away from the group and I turned myself towards Jesus and I released some of that feeling and just moved on and trusted he'd fill me. The moment I stepped back into the group, one of the women I'm great friends with, she comes from another culture and she quite directly dealt with, you were, you were really grumpy, weren't you? Which is not how I'm used to people dealing with it. And so another moment, I could tell where she was coming from, but it wasn't what I was comfortable with. I had another moment, turn yourself towards Jesus, let it out. And just keeping on doing that until it was whatever. And watching in the next few days as we did our outreach, seeing a team that was having fun together, that was working together in, in a high level of unity, seeing people who perhaps had never heard the gospel, they saw the story of David and Goliath for the first time maybe, things like that, and just go, yeah, that was satisfaction. That was hunger being met. Then jump forwards to um, uh, three and a half years ago or so, having a child um, and re reaching this whole new level of hunger and thirst. Um, obviously, if you have young ch ch kids or have had young kids, or even if you just cared to for some, another person for a high degree, given a lot of yourself over to someone else's well-being, it's physically really exhausting. Um, but also spiritually, it takes a lot to build a new habit and a new pattern to turn yourself to Jesus and to, to have him fill the hunger, is what I've found. And um, probably over my adult life, but certainly as I've talked to other mums, um, I've tended to get a feeling, or I've tended to hear from people, it's just a season. And once your kids are a bit older, you can, you can be a bit closer with Jesus again. It's kind of the essence of what I got. And I sort of stood back and I said, I'm not okay with that. I don't read Jesus saying, anyone who comes to me hungry will be satisfied, except if they have young kids who are under the age of five, who aren't sleeping and who have nightmares and who... No, I don't read that in there. I read in there that anyone who comes will be satisfied. And I actually specific, had one mum, I remember, and I don't say this as a judgment on that mum, because I think she's going through her, her own world of hunger and thirst. But it really hit me hard in my spirit, because this mum said to me, I was talking about, I just... The Bible says joy is strength, and I need to get back to that strength because I don't have the strength to be loving to my children like they need or to my husband like he needs. And she said, forget joy, it's about surviving. And I just went, no, it's got to be more. Whatever you're in at the moment, whatever you've been through, it's got to be more than that. It's what Jesus said to the, the people who came after being fed from the loaves and the fish. He said, I can free you from a life that's about just surviving, that's just about putting bread on the table, but it's not about me taking you out of the situation. It's about me bringing a life that bubbles up and flows out of inside of you. And so I, some days not so well, some days better than others, have decided I'm going to keep digging and I'm going to keep annoying Jesus on this one. I'm going to keep shaking and saying, I'm not going to let you go until you tell me how I can be satisfied with this hunger and thirst in this season of my life. And... Um, I think the first time I spoke here, um, a few weeks after that, my son Isaac was probably about seven or eight weeks old. Grace was uh, two. And they both had quite a bad tummy bug. They both already have sensitive guts. So it lasted for three or four weeks. And the physical need, you know, up in the night, that sort of thing, carrying them around in the day, they're doing naps, but they're sleeping on you, all that sort of thing with a newborn and a young child. And then the emotional need, especially for Grace, it would just stand there and go, pick a what, pick a what, pick a what. <laughs> I just put you down, I need to rest. And I just remember, and again, I don't say that to box people out if that you haven't done the parenting thing, but whatever it is that you feel, I'm just giving it, I'm just giving it, I don't have anything left. Um, that was a moment that I think, first of all, it's a blessing because it's easier to go, I'm hungry and thirsty, Jesus, I need you, than when you're in abundance. But I think it's easy to start to look towards the gift, like the people who wanted more food or the woman at the well who said, yes, I want the water. But actually it's because I don't want to have to come to the well in the heat of the day because I'm not accepted by the other women because I've had five husbands and I'm now with a sixth and so I come when it's hot instead of when it's cool. And, you know. um, but if we look at the gift instead of Jesus. And so it was a really intentional thing for me at that time. I would actually recite Mary's song any time I felt that rise up in me of, I can't do this, you don't deserve it. I'd just start by saying, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour because you put me in this situation and it's a blessing. And it doesn't mean it's not hard and I still mean my thirst satisfied. Um, but I began to do that and the intentional part of me had to go, it's not looking and saying, Jesus, would you heal them soon? It's not looking at the hopefully I'll, I'll just feel replenished. It's actually looking at Jesus and saying, I would love it if you heal them soon. I would love it if you replenish me. 
but I know that you'll satisfy me in the way that you choose to satisfy me. So I'm just asking, and then I'm going on living. I'm picking her up and walking around the house one more time until she's calm again. Whatever it is, I'm living with a confident expectation that this will come true. And if I have to ask again in 10 seconds, I'm going to do it because I'm expecting this will happen and all I have to do is bring my hunger to you. And um, again, thinking about physical food, if you've ever fasted or for any other reason you've gone for a long stretch without food, when you're really starving, you're actually not too worried what you get to eat. When there's food on offer, you eat it and you're satisfied. And I think that's, that's the moment, the choice between the gift and Jesus. If you really find that hunger, you, you'll, be, you'll be so grateful and satisfied with what Jesus brings. Um, just a couple more before I wrap us up. Thinking about everyday life um, in abundance. Now, I wouldn't say that I feel like I'm abundantly resourced at the moment in my life. I still don't get a huge amount of sleep. Things are still pretty emotionally draining. Again, you might resonate with that. But abundant in the sense that there's many days on and off at the moment that I wake up and I don't feel like, Jesus, I just cannot do this day without you. There's many days where I go, yeah, I can, I can get to you today. And that's what I'm talking about by abundant. Any sense that the resources that I have could get me through this. And what I've been doing at the moment is trying to really intentionally build healthy rhythms. What do I do first thing in the morning? Is it chuck the clothes in the washing streams, put that on, try and do this, try and do this before Joe gets out the door because then I've got a few jobs done. Maybe I still do that, but there's a mental moment of going, Jesus, I'll do these things, and then there's five minutes even, maybe two, with you. And it's not that I won't do the jobs, but I'm mentally going... I need to have that time with you. That's what's really going to feed me. Or at the end of the, no- at end of the day, I'd love to have just a bit of time to myself before I go to bed. And recently a lot, I pull out my phone and I just scroll through Facebook videos. Um, Law and Order, Special Victims Unit, really interesting. I love it. <laughs> I would go for Marvel movies, but I can't access them at the moment and they're not as quick. So, but, but that's the thing with junk food, right? It's really Moorish. Oh, just another one, just another one. It's just short. I'll just do another one. Um, And trying to pause instead and turn myself to Jesus and say, I would just love a few moments to myself. And often instead that's stepping outside, looking at the sky and just breathing deeply. Taking some time to listen to see what he'll do to fill my hunger and if I don't notice in the moment, that's okay. Um, Sometimes I turn myself to Jesus in moments like that or when I have a a block of downtime and I'd love to watch a movie or read a book. And I really want to say this one because I think it's, it's the Christian thing to go... Well, you should be spending time with Jesus. If you're hungry and thirsty, you've got to go to Jesus. But actually, a friend, a dad, a husband, you love to sit down and watch a movie together sometimes, don't you? You love to do things that you enjoy as well. And I remember specifically one time that I really wanted to read this book, but I felt like I should be spending time with Jesus. And like, maybe I could read the book, but I should spend some time praying, maybe look at the Bible a bit, so on and so forth, and then I could read my book. And so I was like, intentionally avoiding turning to Jesus because I'm like, I think if I ask you, you're going to say no, but I really want to read this book. And then I stopped. I'm like, oh, this is silly. Um, I said, Jesus, I want to read the book. And he said, do it. Let's read it together. (laughs) And I sat there on the sofa for a couple of hours. I didn't have kids at this point um, and read the book to the end. And there was one line, the very closing section of the book, and just what it talked about was literally a smack in the face from Jesus, a gentle smack. It wasn't anything he was kind of pulling me into line about. It was just like, hey, I'm in this too, and you're going to learn from me. If, if you're turning to me, you'll learn from anything. You can sit. I've done it many times with Marvel movies, Disney movies. You sit and you're like, hey, I think the Holy Spirit's trying to tell me something about love or about being a hero or, you know, so and so. Because if it's their turn towards Jesus, I mean, he's in everything, isn't he? It's not just the Christian things. Um, So like I said, trying to build an intentional rhythm, including my downtime. And then last of all, I just wanted to touch on this idea of full to overflowing. Um, I wouldn't say that's me most days at the moment, but I definitely have days where I go, I'm just really satisfied. It's hard work, but this is all to Jesus. And I, I, I know more now about noticing the hunger, noticing the thirst and turning it to Jesus. Um... But one example I just wanted to share of full to overflowing, because there's moments I've had in church, perhaps you've had it, perhaps you've seen someone with it, that you can see they're just overflowing, they're bubbling out, they're talking to, oh, Jesus, this, or this, or or they're worshipping, and you literally, you see it, and it's like, they're overflowing, and as they flow out, Jesus puts more in, and it's just, and it's so beautiful, because in one breath, you're like, I want to stay in this moment forever, Jesus, in the same breath, you're like, I just have to go tell the world, and it's a really precious place, but I think full to overflowing doesn't always look like that. And jumping back to when my husband and I were on our missions training school, the first part was in Israel, and um, 
was, um, had a lot of input and teaching in different sites across Israel. And three bus falls, about 50 people on each bus, were headed to the mountain where, um, I don't know if it's verified or not, but supposedly Jesus preached the sermon on the mount um, with the Beatitudes. Blessed are the, blessed are the, that, that message. And obviously for many of us, that's really exciting because we get to go be where Jesus was. We get to hear a message about what he was sharing. And it was by the lady who's one of the founders of this missions. And so it was a, quite a big moment for many people. And the bus that I was on broke down. So we have 50 people sitting on a bus. It gets fairly hot because the aircon doesn't work either. We're sitting in the side of the road. The Israeli sun isn't as hot as ours because there's no hole in the ozone layer, but it's still hot. <laughs> um, and it was an hour and a half, at least perhaps two hours. And I did not hear a single person complain. And I think part of me goes, oh, yeah, because we're Christians, so we wouldn't. But part of me goes, but we're Westerners, and we're most, most of us were Western or First World, or you know, and we're quite used to a high level of stuff, and we can get whingy about stuff when it's not what we'd hoped it would be. And the bus driver that we had was a Muslim gentleman called Mustafa. Um, throughout our time in Israel, he was always driving us, and people were quite friendly and would say hi and perhaps even say, how's your day, things like that. He tended to keep himself to himself. I get it. We were a group of Christians. I don't know if he was, didn't want to talk to us or didn't even know how to. That's sort of thing. I mean, I think he knew English. I don't mean that. Um, but he had kind of kept himself to himself. And watching his actions when the bus was broken down, I reckon that, I think maybe he didn't fill up with petrol when we stopped at the petrol station or we put the wrong petrol. So I think for some, there was some level of him being responsible for the bus not working. And by the time the bus got working again, um, we completely missed the message and we, we didn't even go to the mountain. And again, not a single complaint. People just found things to do, things to talk about. Um, hopping off the bus or hopping back on the bus, actually, I think, after it started working, said, thank you so much, because he'd actually got a friend to come and bring, I think, petrol to fix the bus. Um, thanks so much, Mustafa. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Right. You know, like, everyone was really genuinely appreciative. And I watched this bus driver over the next few days, and he didn't, you know, jump right in and say, tell me about Jesus. But he did, something changed a bit. I think he was a little bit more curious, and he was a bit more, like, he looked me in the eyes and smiled when I said hello to him which he hadn't done the earlier days. Um, he hadn't been outright rude, but I think he just kind of wasn't looking for the connection. And I think that's full to overflowing. Because I think when you're bumped and, and knocked around and things don't turn out how you want and you're in the hot sun and whatever, if what comes out is still gratefulness, people see that and, and they notice that difference. Um, so I would like to think that even if that was the only thing that I was part of doing in my missions training school was to bless one Muslim bus driver by him seeing that it didn't change our attitude towards him, that we still loved him and we're still appreciative. That's, I think, a really big outpouring of Jesus in someone's life. So, where to from here? Um, it's hopefully helpful and maybe inspiring, maybe encouraging that you can hear the grunginess and the realness um, and find moments for your own life that that resonates. But we don't want to leave it there um, because... We've got to have a little look at what is it actually doing inside of you? What for yourself, your hunger, your thirst, where are you at? Are you empty, hungry or thirsty, overflowing? Um, and what, what do you want? And what, where are you going to go to from here? What are you looking for in your walk with Jesus when you leave this building? So we're going to have communion in a moment. And um, Daniel, perhaps if you'd like to come up and, and play a little bit of music. Um, going back to the roots of... The Passover, which communion is based on. Um, the Israelites had been in slavery for hundreds of years. Jesus, uh, Jesus, no, well, kind of Jesus, God, at, um, had done all these miraculous things to convince the Pharaoh to free them, but probably also to build the confidence of the uh, Israelites. They're sitting down for a meal. God had decreed how the meal should happen, what they should have. And there's so much in that, so much symbolic. But one really physical for that meal, one real physical importance they were getting sustenance for a big journey ahead. They were sitting down, filling themselves with bread and other food. They were about to march out. They were about to flee from the Egyptians, go through the Red Sea, and actually eventually spend the 40 years in the desert. Part of this meal was sustenance for what's ahead. And so as we share around the communion, I'd like you to have a think. If you need sustaining, if you need filling for what's ahead of you, honestly, where are you at? Are you empty? Are you coming to Jesus and often feeling that you're unchanged, that you're full of your own things, but not satisfied or just completely empty? Um, if you are hungry or thirsty, are you turning yourself and moving yourself towards Jesus 
Or is it perhaps you're turning yourself or moving yourself towards a gift that is a blessing if we are given it through Jesus, not looking for the resource itself. Um, so we're going to have a few minutes to do that. Um, I'll leave some space, it, it, perhaps a bit longer than we're used to, so it may feel uncomfortable, but just take the time as you need to as it's handed around. Um, after probably about five minutes, I'll invite everyone to drink the juice and eat the bread together. Um, so we'll leave that to the end, and then I'll pray before we finish with a song. There's some artworks there at the side, if you can see them, or also if you go to the next slide on the screen, just a visual that filled my head of each of us as a pot. Are you turning yourself towards Jesus? Are you tilting a bit? You're trying to do it in your own strength, turning towards someone or something else. And it really struck me, if you were here last week or saw AJ's message, he had an image of the white light coming in and the rainbow coming out, and it's the same. It's very much the same. Because, yes, it's about me being filled and satisfied, but I'm filled to overflowing. You're filled to overflowing. And me and who I am and how that reflects God mixes with you and who are, you are and how that reflects God. And together we have this vibrancy of rainbow colour. So let's take a moment to consider that for ourselves, where you're at. Um, whoever it is that brings the communion around, if you could do that now. Like I said, we'll give us probably about five minutes and then we can eat and drink together um, before we move into worship.
Jesus, we gather together in your name today. And we look at this wine, this communion juice, and ask for the thirstiness within us. Help us to turn it to you and let you satisfy, satisfy us. Would you like to drink the juice with me? And Jesus, we think of the Israelites preparing for a long journey. You wanted to feel and encourage them spiritually and nourish them and also feel and sustain them physically. As we take this bread, would you take our hunger? Let us turn it all to you and nothing else. Feel the feeling that you give us and trust that there's more on the way. Let's take the bread together. Thank you, Caitlin. Wonderful to have that time just to reflect over those words and, and the pictures. And we're very raw, very real. Thank you, Caitlin, for being so honest and with us. And we can um, relate, I think, on many levels of different things you've shared, whatever parts of our lives we're at. And um, I love that as we come out of this message of thinking about neediness and, and are we satisfied and maybe some of our time issues with our relationship with God, the Lord that we can be confidently expectant that God is doing something as we cry out to him and as we ask him to minister we can be confident that he is breaking new ground in our lives that the Holy Spirit is at work and so we're going to sing a song of surrender and as we do so, if you feel like you, you need to, you know, someone to pray for you, then you come to the front here and we can pray for you as, as the song ends and you just give your heart afresh to the Lord this morning. That's what we want to invite you to do because he is making new wine, as the word says. He is doing something new. Do you believe that? In each and every one of us. So let's be encouraged in that. Let's stand together and uh, surrender our lives to the Lord afresh this morning. Yeah. As we are crushed sometimes, as we are pressed, as we struggle, he is making new wine. Amen. Let's sing those words together.
Oh, Lord, Jesus, we just thank you for the opportunity to come to you, Lord. And it's, indeed, it's our prayer as we, as we wrestle with issues of thirst sometimes or where we fall short. You know, sometimes we might say, we want more of you, Lord. But, Lord, you want more of us. So I pray, Lord, that as we, even as we wrestle with doubt and uncertainty, struggles or times when we don't feel you, Lord, that we will give that give ourselves more wholeheartedly to you, to allow you to work in us, Lord. And we know that we stand on your promise today that you give us to um, all the things that she's teaching us and the things that she's to um, all the things that she's teaching us and the things that she's learned and, and learning along the way. And I thank you for her honesty and vulnerability in sharing that with us, Lord. It helps us to, to consider where we're at, Lord. And you've brought us through so much and we just give you thanks today that you're at work in our lives. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you for faith in your name. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace every day. Lord, we give it to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord lead you and, and keep you through the week and bless you and everybody online too. God bless you and your household as, as you watch now or during the week. And uh, do not forget also after the service, if you want to pray or talk about any of these things and share, with, even with Caitlin, please do so. Come out the back. It's also a time where we can get organised for that beach trip as well. So let's join together at the back for morning tea. God bless everybody.